As I was saying, for those of you who don't know us, my name is Emily and I'm the Senior Digital Marketing Strategist at Union Street Media. Um, and I'm joined by Chris Badami and we're going to talk to you about how people find their home online now. 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 Uh, I'm Chris Badami. I am an account strategist at Union Street Media. I've been here for about five, six years now. I've been in marketing uh, for since I've been out of college, uh, which was decades and decades and decades ago. And uh, Union Street Media, we are a, an omni-channel digital marketing company. For you, those of you who are not clients right now, we are an omni-channel digital marketing company um, that um, that it works together with our clients to make sure that they are everywhere that their 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 clients would be looking, their customers are looking online. Exactly. All right. And, and before we get going, we were always producing this content. We've been producing a lot of content lately. There's blogs on our website. There's YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get on there. Look at the look for stuff. I think I even see uh, Susie asking uh, where the virtual tour video is. So we will uh, Christian will make sure that that's available. Um, we'll take it take a look. There's lots of stuff on there. Lots of stuff coming out on social media. Like it, share it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We love it when you do. Yeah. Um, so if you are familiar with us, if you're a Union Street Media client, you've probably seen this slide before. Um, for years, we've known that 50% of people find their home online. Um, and that's more relevant and true now than ever before. Um, so getting in front of those people, identifying how you should be getting in front of those people is really important. Slide goes back. It's forever. Uh, you know, I mean, this is this is not even uh, during shelter in place. This is before shelter in place. There, there were lots of people looking on the Internet when they were thinking about buying a home. Now, you know, this is, you know, not even um, this is prior to March 11th. With March 11th is like this date of line of demarcation that uh, my good buddy Chris Seidner uses in his uh, conversations with clients um about like hey from from march 11th when the nba closed their season and shut it down and the the, the um, flights got shut down in europe and uh i was in vegas at the uh lre convention and we had to make a mad dash for the airports <laughs> but that was on march 11th and this is prior to march 11th there were a lot of people looking online for houses just waiting until you see how many people are looking after march 11th Exactly. Um, so now more than ever, people are searching for homes online. Um, the second week of April, we surpassed our 2019 numbers. So even during shelter in place, we're continuing to see more and more traffic on our websites. April was our third highest month ever in the number of sessions globally across all of our sites, nearly 2 million sessions. Um, and that's after shelter in place. So people have more time on their hands than ever. They're stuck in, in their homes and they know what's not working for them and what they kind of need. Um, so now it's up to you to get in front of all of these people. They're, they're a captive audience, if you will. So making sure that you are providing relevant content to their needs is the best thing you can be doing right now. Third highest ever. 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 In the history of Union Street Media, the amount of websites, the amount of traffic that's coming to the websites looking for homes, third highest ever. There's a ton of people out there. Uh, our, um, our, one of our uh, digital marketing experts, Alyssa, uh, was, um, was talking to a representative at Google uh, just yesterday. And uh, they said, uh, there's, there's just so many people online right now that you, you need to be getting, they were trying to tell us, hey, like more display advertising, get get your name and your brand across on all these articles that people are consuming like crazy. But it doesn't even require that because there are so many people searching online for homes right now uh, that it's it, you can be in front of them talking. You don't even need the display advertising, um, you know, to be on articles that have nothing to do with real estate. They're talking and they're looking for real estate now, third highest ever, That's that's huge. And it continues to grow too. So this doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. Um, so start building out content today so that, you know, as more and more people search online, you're the one that's showing up in search results. So people have questions. How do you determine what people want to know? And then what do you do about it? 
And there's lots of people online right now. And I, yeah. I love this slide. So this is a great slide. So this is, this is um, there's a lots of people online right now looking to consume information about, uh, about homes and buying a house right now. And this is, this is you know, it's, it's not what, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not who, it's what, it's where, it's how. How do I buy a house online? What kind of house do I want to buy online? Where? These graphs right here, this is a graph from Google Trends. So this shows you how many people are typing into Google search terms like homes with acreage versus how many people are searching for terms like find a real estate agent. And you can see it's a, it's a huge difference between what people are really looking for, which is I need to find a home that's going to fit my new lifestyle, the new normal, the new way I want to look at, um, what I want to live in the world versus who's going to sell me that home. So you can still, you can still be talking in this conversation. It's just the, the conversation isn't about you. The conversation's about them and what they're interested in. And exactly. And if you're providing the content with the information, you know, homes with acreage, if you have a homes with acreage recommended search, then you're showing up in search you're getting that brand recognition. You're building that trust with the client um, before they even know who they want to work with. So just yeah, build yourself it. as the expert. Exactly. And you know it better than anybody. So you should be able to, to easily navigate the situation. You got tons of people consuming that content. Exactly. Um, so kind of going off of finding, um, finding a real estate agent versus types of homes. Um, Zillow, these are Zillow ads that started running on May 17th. And you can see that they're focusing on mindset, a home, like types of home and evoking emotion opposed to contact a lender or find a real estate agent. So we have don't let anyone cancel your daydream, stillness, um, desert oasis, these things that people um, are looking for. And it's not overly salesy, right? Like this is just, we know that things are tough for now. Like that doesn't mean that everything needs to stop. You still need to find a home here are your options. And, and these, Emily, these are ads from uh, Monday. This exactly. is May 17th, these ads from the from Facebook ads that Zillow's are put, Zillow is putting out. And they're doing a great job with it. I mean, this, is, this has got nothing to do with find an agent. This has exactly. got everything to do with find the home that's going to make you feel comfortable in these times. Oasis, stillness, silent. Don't give up on your dreams. Like that's the messages they're putting out. And, and I think you've got to be putting out something similar to that. Exactly. Um, and then these are realtor.com ads and you can say, see that they're um, more connect with a lender, but they're also saying like, get answers to your questions. You know, like we know you have questions right now. We know that it's confusing right now. We have the answers. Um, and then they're also promoting virtual tours, which I think everyone should be doing right now. And we'll get into video a little bit later on. Um, what kind of two different ways I think Zillow is doing it better um, as far as evoking emotion and pre presenting the home as opposed to realtor, which is more like connecting and salesy. Um, but I still think the get answers to your questions thing is something um, that you should be promoting as well. Yeah, definitely. Zillow's got a much nicer touch and exactly. feel than realtor, but realtors still talk in mortgage rates, lock in those mortgage rates. That's what they're thinking about. Those are the questions people are asking online. How can I look at a home safely? That safety from your own home. How can I do that? Virtual tours. Here they are. Click on them. Go for it. Exactly. Um, so there's kind of like three big tools that we use in the office among others, um, but the three I want to talk to you about today is Crazy Egg, which is an app where you um, can track how users are using an individual web page. You can see where they're clicking. You can see where they're coming from. Um, Google Trends, which you saw those graphs from before. Um, you can kind of look at high level um, trends and search terms. You can get more granular than like homes with acreage. You can type in more region specific keywords um, and then answer the public, which is amongst some of my favorite tools to use um, and kind of where we got these trends on the side here. From and I'm just gonna show you guys how cool this place is and uh, and take a look at this. This yes. is an awesome website. This is really cool, and this is how Emily comes up with a lot of her ideas when she's creating content about what's relevant. And these are the, how we know what questions to ask and how you figure out what questions are being asked. Exactly, and so for the 18th, exactly yesterday, right? Questions. These are the things that people are asking right now. 
Yep. And so for our example today, we use just real estate, um, but you might want to use, you know, real estate in Greenwich, Massachusetts real estate, you know, something that's more specific to your region. Um, but for today's purpose, we just kind of looked at the broad. Um, so it'll show you these cool visuals. That's all of the questions that people are searching related to real estate. You can also search where it's just a list if that's easier for you. Um, but I really like the impact of this visual, right? Um, and you can see all the different types of questions people are answering or asking now. And this gets updated regularly when trends change. So I am always looking at this for ideas on what's relevant content that we can be creating. Um, so in addition to questions, there's uh, propositions, there's comparisons, which can be helpful. Um, a lot of times in comparisons, I'll see like X city versus Y city cost of living breakdowns. So that's a great information to provide to people. They're already looking for it. You have the knowledge base. Um, it's just about building that content. And then you can also see all of the alphabetical um, searches that people are conducting related to real estate and then comparisons as well, which um, related in comparisons, which is helpful. Yeah, so is. if you haven't used Answer the Public before, it's free to use. Um, you do only get a limited number of like searches you can do, but I've never had a problem with it. And this is my full-time job. Um, so I wouldn't say like, get out there, just type in some keywords that are relevant to your area. Um, and you'll, I guarantee, be kind of surprised that we will find it and what people are searching for. Yeah, If you can't figure out what to write about online right now, this is a great place to start. This will start your engines moving. You know, this will start getting the ideas flowing. Um, what are the questions that people are asking about? And, and we pulled a couple of questions out right here. This is, you know, from, from today or yesterday um, of, of what they're asking in real estate. So we, we pulled up, Emily pulls up that, that search and it shows us a bunch of questions. And here are a couple of questions that came out of that. You know, what, what, what should I expect in, in, in a price increase? Should I inspect in price increases? Will the market recover? What, what, what do you have out there for real estate with acreage? That's why we put it into the trends uh, report because we want, you know, like this is what people are asking. So let's see, comparative to real estate agents, how many people are asking this question versus the real estate agent question? And there were a lot, as we saw on the prior slide. Uh, so these are the things that you can be writing about. You know that you know this stuff better than anyone. You guys have the information. You're getting the information from NAR. You're getting the information from your company, your, your franchises, your brokerages, your, 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 uh, your local uh, you know, town council or whatever. You guys are in it. You know what uh, the rules and regulations are and what to expect. And if you're providing that information, it, it, here's another time where Zillow can't provide the information you can provide. Let's get out there. Let's get ahead of it. Like, here's your chance. Here's your opportunity with a captive audience. Also, yeah. And then, like, also kind of like um, taking chances, you know, testing things out. For example, um, when everyone was panic buying toilet paper and you couldn't find toilet paper anywhere in the country, um, I sat down with some of my clients and created a Homes with Bidet recommended search. Is it the like highest converting search on their website? Absolutely not. But is it highly shareable on social media because it's topical and pretty funny? Um, it also gets you in front for long tail keywords. Um, it shows that you are paying attention to what's going on in the world right now. And it's just another way for people to enter your website, even if you know they might not seriously be looking for a home with a bidet. They're getting to your website and then you can link them Who's to not? other places on your site, right? Who's not <laughs> for a home with a bidet right now. I mean, you know, like, I mean, we all need homes with bidets these days. But anyway, I, you know, I mean, this is a way, like Emily's saying right there, like share it on, this is highly shareable content that isn't you trying to sell people on the idea of buying a home right now. That you, what you want to be sharing are, if you are interested in buying and selling a home, here's how you do it. Uh, okay. I, you know, this is the phrase that I've been using, which is, it is, you're not going to get them to decide on whether to buy a home right now. And that comes off really salesy and probably it sounds pretty poor right now. But if you can give them the ideas on how they would go about doing that, if they were, if they want to act, you know how they can transact. If they want to act, you can transact. That's what you're trying to explain to people right now. If I want to buy a home, 
How did I go about doing that? Is it possible? How do I get a home inspector there? How do I, I do a showing? How do, how do I go in and look at the house? What, what should I be expecting for from paperwork and, and how that all works and how the town clerk's office works and, and all that stuff? And then, and then why, what should I be thinking about when I'm looking at real estate with the acreage of land? Um, uh, you know, like those are things that you, you and only you have the knowledge and you can take back that mind share. Um, and this is highly shareable stuff where you're not just pounding people with low rates by now. Exactly. Um, this is another Google Trends graph just shows buying versus selling a house, um, which is interesting um, to look at how many more people are interested in buying right now than selling um, and over time. Um, but again, just taking a look at trends and saying, okay, well, what can I build out based on that? Right, Chris? Right, right, <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> look, look there. The, I, I, the, the, the craziest thing about this graph here is this is over the past five years. This is Google Trends over the past five years. What people have been searching for on Google. They obviously the the the, the first takeaway is that there are more people are looking for buying a home than selling a home, right? But but look at the look at where you are in the beginning of this. We're at an all-time high. At the end of this chart for buying a house, you are at an all-time high of people looking to buy homes. It, there has never been more people typing in that search term into Google. Um, and that's just because like what Google had said to us, there are so many people online right now. They're only online right now. There are so many people looking. This is your opportunity to showcase that you can help them buy a house. Because yeah. they're looking. And it's continuing to rise too. So we'll be keeping an eye on this for sure. Um, and then this is just a comparison, kind of proving the who, the what and where versus the who. So you can see that buying a house is obviously miles ahead of even homes with acreage, but homes with acreage has more search tra um, traffic than find a real estate agent. So this is just an example of how um, you can use Google Trends to identify what is the most relevant um, keywords to be promoting through content on your website. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just another way of hitting that, hitting that, that, that banging that drum, which is people looking for buying homes. Uh, they're not necessarily looking for which agent to use right now. So get that information out about buying homes, about uh, the homes for sale. Exactly. Uh, and as you build trust with those users that are coming for that highly relevant content, then they find you and then they don't need to do that search, right? So it's all about providing the information, getting them to come back to you. Um, when they are ready to pull the trigger. Look, I sit, I sit in client meetings all the time and, and clients are always saying like, I want to be known as the, as the, the expert in my area. I want to be known as the expert in my area. How do I become the expert in my area? How right now the, the, the mind share has never been, there's never been more people online and there's never been uh, uh, less people uh, contributing to the content. So you have their mind share. You have a ton of their mind share right now. Here's your chance to become that, that expert and, that, and, and position yourself so that as we come out of this and it's coming faster, showing times that like Jack Miller at, at T360 just posted that showing times are back up to where they were in 2019. Uh, the showing time app, show times uh, uh, booked appointments are back to where they were in 2019. So it's happening. It's happening fast. And I'm sure you guys know it better than we do um, that uh, now is when you get in front of them so that you're building that pipeline for the future. Because I think that 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 spring season is just being postponed a couple of months. Yep. All right. So now that we know that people have questions and what those questions are, now it's time to deliver your answers um, and letting people know that you are the area expert. Like we've been and, talking and about, this is, and this is you have answers comes from an article that uh, 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 Rachel Allard, who is our head of digital marketing and and operations here at Union Street Media, put this great blog post together. There's a bunch of parts to it. It's all on our blog on UnionStreetMedia.com Insights page. It's all on our blog. They break it up, and our first topic is ha ha you have the answers. Yep. Um, so you want to create informational content that builds trust with your audience, as we've been saying, trust, build that trust, show that you're experts, um, you know, things that you can be doing, like advertising services that you offer um, that might be different than what you used to offer. So virtual showings, um, webinars to answer questions about financing or selling, those sorts of things. 
um, you know, having that personal connection with video and we'll get into video a little bit later on, um, but letting them know, hey, we're here to help. Um, and then, you know, your ad copy might look like moving during a pandemic. Here's what to consider, safe ways to sell your home during COVID. Um, so just providing that informational content that we know based on the trends that people are looking for um, and just making sure that you are coming up in search as the expert. Yeah, and, and what uh, I love that idea there, uh, online webinars. I, I just love that. Um, what, what a great idea. We've been doing webinars. It's been getting a lot of attention. Uh, you've got a captive audience. You can produce webinars online right now to talk to people like a buy, home buying seminar about how do you buy a home in this in this current environment and what what a great resource and what a great information for people to take in and what a great way for you to build your pipeline. Exactly. I just love that idea. Um, so kind of on the video, being an everyday influencer. Um, so this is an example of a realtor in Vermont. She's not a USM um, client yet, at least, um, but she um, posted a virtual tour of this property. Um, and she just, you know, has someone hold the camera for her and walks through like she would, um, you know, in, in a normal quote unquote virtual tour. Um, but it's just online. And I think that's a great way to have a personal touch and then also, you know, have content that you can link to share on your website, um, and just show that you're, you know, uh, um, doing things like the times, you know, um, use, utilizing video. Yeah, I mean, we hear it all the time in real estate, right? Like, you need to be the everyday influencer. And this is another part of Rachel's uh, blog post. And, and that's an easy way. I mean, you know how to show a house, you know how to walk through a house, flip your phone around and, and or have somebody walk with you with a phone camera and and bam, you show in the house to people, you, you, you compliment that with a Matterport tour and you put that on your website and you've become an everyday influencer. How easy is that for you to become exactly. an everyday influencer? Uh, it's, it's, it's the golden standard of what you're trying to do. We're marketers, right? And that's what we need to be doing is marketing ourselves. That, that's how you drive. That's how you drive prospects to your business right now. And that's how you get captive audiences. You, you, you do it by becoming an influencer. And it's easier now than ever because they need that information. They can't just walk into the house. So yeah, make um, it a video. Make it a video. Um, so, you know, you saw that it wasn't necessarily like high production value. She was just pr um, creating content and that's the idea, right? YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google and they're owned by Google. So it all ties in together. You want, uh, you know, if you're producing content for your YouTube channel, you're gonna get uh, ranked higher in Google because it all ties in together. So if you don't have a YouTube video or a YouTube channel yet, um, you definitely should start one and it's just about creating content. So whether it's listing videos, virtual tours, creating landing page or like taking landing page content that already exists on your site or blog posts and creating short videos about that. That's something that we do at Union Street Media on our YouTube channel. Um, as you can see, Chris uh, promoting, doing a video on a blog topic that we did. So it's like, it doesn't matter. Just start yeah. making videos, right? Um, maybe Q and A's on your social media, and then you have a, a way to embed videos into your website, um, links to share when you're getting those questions. And it also gives that personal touch, right? Where they can hear your voice, see your personality, and it's not just words on a screen. So okay. lots of benefits. And, it, and, and, and it, it, don't miss that point that she made, that Emily made in the beginning there. Second largest search engine on the internet. Over 3 you billion video views per day. And it's a captive audience, right? And the more that you create, YouTube will just keep recommending your next videos when they're watching. Um, and then, you know, next thing you know, they're giving you a call. And, and link them together, right? Like, exactly. Like also, you, you know, don't forget Google owns YouTube. So exactly. if you're putting, if you don't have a YouTube channel, get one now. Go out and stop, get off of this webinar and go get <laughs> a YouTube channel. And if, and if you do have a webinar, a uh, YouTube channel, link it back to your website because Google sees that link and they love that link. And that link, that's it, it, for, for all, probably a majority are, are Union Street Media clients on here. Talk to your DSS, call your DSS up. They can help you show you how to embed videos on your website so that there is a link from your YouTube channel to your website 
the, the, the end user won't even realize that the, the link is there and they'll be watching videos of your listings um, and, and linking to blog posts or linking to any of that stuff. All that stuff, linking that stuff together is a huge help. Talk to your DSS and they will walk you through how to do that. Um, but get on it. Exactly. All right, so now that we know what trends and um, a little bit about content creation, how do you use those trends to feel change? You have the knowledge, so use that to your advantage. Um, so people are searching for specific home types, right? We, we talked about homes with acreage specifically. This is an example of one of our clients in North Carolina that has a whole bunch of lifestyle searches. And these are really relevant right now. You know, green homes, homes with known views, affordable housing, homes that are on acreage, um, you know, new construction, things that we're seeing in trends and then creating that content so that you show up in searches. And I know Chris loves recommended searches. If you're a client of ours or have ever talked to Chris, you know, this, this is his favorite piece of everything. Um, yeah. And I they it's didn't want me to talk. They almost left this slide out because they were worried <laughs> that I would go into an hour long rant about why you should be doing recommended searches. Uh, if you're a Union Street Media customer, if you're not a Union Street Media customer, you should do recommended searches. If you are a Union Street Media client, you have one of the most powerful recommended search uh, tools in the business. And you take advantage of that because that is the cornerstone of search engine optimization. That's how you get pages to rank. You create relevant content with the listings on it. You create these pages about homes with acreage, and you've got a, a web page that is, is just a great web page. If you add a little bit of content to it and you link that to a blog post, which we're going to get to, link to other articles, um, you've, got, you've got an A-plus uh, search engine optimization uh, style content. And, and frankly, don't even worry about it. search engines is one thing, highly shareable. Again, like Emily said, highly shareable content. You're putting that stuff out on so, uh, social media for people to look at. It's not just a listing alert. It's not just, um, you know, a, uh, you know, five ways to state your home. This is, this is stuff they're looking for, stuff they're asking exactly. search engines. Put it out there for them. And that kind of leads into what you're saying too about linking everything. So are people asking similar questions? Are you seeing trends? Um, I noticed the other day that home, what are the best home renovations for resale value? Um, home Depot is doing really well right now because it's one of the only places that's open during all of this, or at least was. Um, and so people are spending more time in their homes. They have more time on their hands. They're looking for how they can up their resale value. Um, it could be like we talked about before the, um, cost of living breakdowns, how to afford a home right now, um, how, what, how to make the best out of a virtual tour as a buyer. Um, and then this can all be linked to recommended searches, right? So um, at the bottom of this page, which isn't um, shown on the slide, there's links to um, homes to fix up or potential, um, lower cost homes that could use an improvement and just making sure that everything's linked back to each other so that you're getting credit for those in internal links. In internal linking that is the way google searches through your website and then this um, is also a great thing to make a video about too you know and then embed that on the page as well so it all kind of works together cohesively create a topic cluster exactly you know if it's homes for acreage that people are interested in you've got the rec search page Create the blog post that speaks to that rec search page and then link that blog post to the rec search page. If you are having a hard time figuring out what content to put on your website, that's where you start. You know, you create blog posts that link back to recommended searches. You create blog, you're the one who has information about the towns and services that are provided in those towns, the great hikes, the great lifestyle choices, the great restaurants. Uh, you know, and nowadays it's, it's hiking and, and how do I get away from it all? But like you have that information, you can push that information out. That's the candy. That's the search engine candy that be, you know, or the, I should say the social media candy that'll pull people in, that'll be interested in, and they'll read that blog post and then they'll go to your recommended search. And, and, and that takes away the entire idea of like, how often should I be doing blog posts? If they are really if, if you're creating, and maybe this isn't evergreen content, but it's damn close. It's, yeah. it, it's deciduous content, let's call it. 
it, it's content that's going to be alive for five years that's going to be yeah. relevant to people for people are still going to be searching for these things even after things go quote unquote back to normal or at least more normal people are still going to want to know what are the best home renovations for resale value and now that we're moving towards you know video and virtual tours i don't see that kind of going back to how it was before. I think we're just gonna continue moving forward with content like that. So don't be afraid to build out content that you think might be more relevant now than after, but you know, avoiding words like pandemic or COVID allows it to be more relevant farther down the road as well. Um, and then this is kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Crazy Egg. And you can see this is um, an older version of our homepage um, for our corporate Union Street Media website. And you can see where people are clicking, where they're not clicking. Um, and this is a great way to identify what kind of user experience updates can you make to your website, you know, after you've identified the trends and what people are searching for, look at what the changes you can make on your homepage to um, improve click through rates, improve um, engagement on your website. So something I've been telling all of my clients is that you should be adding virtual tour links to your main navigation and, you know, using Crazy Egg or a service like it. Um, you can identify what people are clicking on. You can see like, okay, they're not necessarily clicking on this call to action, but maybe I should update what it's saying. I should update what's in my main navigation to be more relevant to what people are searching for today. Hey, people are looking at the top of your website. Yeah. Um, you know, like if you've got important stuff, put it at the top of your website, put it in your navigation bar. Again, if you're a Union Street Media client, you can go out and do this right now. You can switch your main navigation bar. Put in, you know, um, uh, you know how to handle a, a buy, buying a house now. Put in virtual tour uh, recommended search links. Put that stuff at the top. You can always go back and change it later when it's not necessary. Put stuff at the top of your website. They're not scrolling down to the bottom of the website. They're going and looking at stuff above the fold. So get that stuff up there and get the most pertinent and important stuff right in front of them so they don't have to figure it out for themselves. It's right there for them. And you, you can call your DSS right now and they'll show you how to do it. Exactly. Or your uh, company's DSS, whoever you use. All right, so that's kind of everything. <laughs> um, I, we're gonna open it up to questions um, and kind of take those as they come in. Um, so if you have a question, put it in chat. Um, and then Chris, do you have chat pulled up? I do, I do. Okay. I do. Um, we don't have any questions, probably because we answered all the questions. We were just that thorough, huh? And uh, I appreciate it. Just remember, hey, like this content's gonna be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Union Street Media. Um, go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like, go to our, our uh, you know, Insta and, and Facebook and go look at, we're constantly pushing out this content. There's content from the other stuff. I, I do have a question. I did not understand Crazy Egg data. So maybe Emily, you can speak to a little bit about what Crazy Egg is, yep. which is a piece of software that yes. measures where people put their maps on the website. Yeah. So there's different um, kind of like mapping that it can show you. This one is the heat map. So it shows you like where people are clicking and where people are scrolling. Um, this is like a little bit more advanced than like using Google Trends, but I thought it was still um, an important piece since, you know, if you have a good user experience on your website, people are gonna stay on it longer, convert. Um, obviously we're not gonna show you kind of the map, ins and right? outs of our clients specifically. Um, so we showed you um, an old version of our website. Um, but you can see like where it's more red, those are like where people are clicking the most. Um, there's also filters you can see where people are clicking based on how they got to your website. Um, you can see where people like stop scrolling on your page, which is helpful to know like maybe I should move content up or move content that's not getting clicked on down to make room for more relevant content. Um, and it's just another piece to identify how people are using your website, um, what people are looking for. Um, in kind of melding, you know, the trends that we were seeing in Google Trends and answer the public with how people are today using your website. Yeah, yeah. So it's where the mouse sits on your on a website, and what people spend most of their time clicking on. The hot spots are obviously in the navigation bar. Next yeah. question is how it's from Susie. It says, "How do you turn a blog post into a Facebook live stream?" Yeah, so um, in our last webinar about um, virtual tours, we touched on um, live streams as well. Um, but it was kind of just my idea of 
it doesn't have to be formalized content, right? You don't need to sit down and, and um, record like in a studio setting or anything like that. Let, like go live on your on your Facebook or wherever um, and talk about relevant content. Like, hey, I saw this interesting thing or did you hear about this? This is what's happening. And then you, there's interactability with a Facebook live stream as well. People can ask questions. Um, and it's just another way to kind of interact with your sphere of influence, people who are looking for information and then creating video content out of um, content that already exists on your website that you're already building out. So you're going to work, you're going to, you're going to have the Facebook live stream and you're going to talk about things like how do I navigate the buying process uh, right now uh, with, with, with the new, with the new regulations? What are the regulations for my area? Those are great ideas for, for what you should be doing a Facebook live stream about. And then once that stuff is recorded, you can take that and you can plug it into a blog post or you can plug it onto YouTube or you can, you can, you can start reusing that content for other things. I mean, it, it, maybe you write a blog post. Like you, you, you should be connecting to, to people in, in lots of different ways right now. You've yeah. got Facebook, Facebook Live, you got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got your blogging. And you've got your um, your your website, you know, uh, or just calling people like if, if you're not calling the people in your in your database right now, like their their timeline has changed as a result of this. Right. So you have a ton of people in your database. You guys should be calling them not because you want to sell them anything and not because you're telling them, hey, look, you know, mortgage rates are lower than they've ever been. Let's get going. But. Hey, what is your timeline now? How have things have changed? Some people's timeline might get sped up like crazy. Some people's timelines might be moved back a little bit. So checking in with those people in your sphere of influence, making those calls, getting the information out on social media, getting the information out on blogs. Uh, people who blog on their website, there's 126% more leads for websites where people are blogging. So blog on your website. And if you can't think of things to blog about, call me. I will give you ideas on what to blog about. We'll talk about it. I will tell you and and, and we will go that way because there's there's tons of ideas. It, it, you should not be short on ideas.